Hello. This is Olivia Robinson, offering to be your guide on a tra trans journey through the labyrinth of your own being. Sit quietly now and enjoy this experience. We all of us have our known death and you would not be drawn to listen to this unless, unless you wish to experience the magic of the unknown world which we all share within. everyday self is only about one thirtieth of your real self. Your physical body has a brain that's like a computer that can only take the five senses and the logical deductions of the human brain. It cannot receive anything greater than itself. That is a maximum. The greater can contain the lesser but the lesser can never contain the greater. It can only reflect it through symbols or as in a distorting mirror, two-dimensional from something multi-dimensional. You have an etheric body, which is the matrix around which your real body is built. This is this is connected by a cord. Further in deeper consciousness is your astral or psychic vehicle. That is what you know before you get born, incarnated, and what you experience when you pass into other lives. Deeper still is your spirit, which contains within itself memories of all your past incarnations. Now, in the shrine, which is your room, or out of doors, wherever you sit, place a magical circle around you of protection. And now pray to the deity in whom you truly believe. Now, I want you to relax completely, as if you were dropping off to sleep but do keep your consciousness going. You feel peaceful now and happy. However, please come back properly from trance. Make sure you return in reverse way any journey you've undertaken and lo locate yourself properly in your physical body. You could drink a, a glass of water. We have a priesthood in the College of Isis who are able to conduct groups or individuals through trance because they've had training in that. Uh, our, our address is Clonigal Castle, Enniscorthy, Ireland. You can give up a whole hour if you like and see the whole journey through or you can divide it into three parts that is hear my introduction and after each spell of quiet spiritual meditation you withdraw carefully to whatever scene you have been enjoying and return to everyday life locate yourself in your own surroundings come back and I recommend you're drinking a glass of water and then going off and having a cup of tea and something to eat because on your own it is best to retain some earthly consciousness. I don't want you to go into deep trance unless you are with a group or indeed with members of the Fellowship of Isis. The Fellowship of Isis has the College of Isis with trained priestesses and priests who are adept at helping people 
true mystical journey. However, our ICMs all over the world are willing to help you if you wish to work with a group. However, some of us are living quietly in a bed sitter, solo, and we also wish to enjoy the happiness of visiting that land which we knew before we were born into this incarnation and which we will know when we leave this earthly life. So between the times especially of dawn and dusk, we may remember the world of dreams and this is a waking dream. Above all, it is a happy dream. I don't want you to feel anything unpleasant because everything unpleasant relates to the unreal. Only the good is real and, it, and relates to eternal reality. So if there are any questions or anything you'd like to know, just write to me, Olivia Robertson, The Fellowship of Isis, Chronicle Castle, Ennis Corsi, Ireland, land indeed of mystery and of dreams. Now, I would like you to lie back and if you choose, shut your eyes and hearken to the prayer to the goddess Ariadne, crowned with stars, lady of dreams. Hear her priestess invoking her. Wise Ariadne of the deep sea, high fruitful mother of the barley, thou whose starry crown of Thetis shines in the heavens, bring us thy guidance, skillful weaver of the shining thread of life that holds all spheres in patterned beauty, inspire us with thy wisdom, thou who art above the labyrinth of the mind, aid us in our thought, for thou, daughter of truth, art wed with fiery Dionysus of the fruitful vine, and so from truth and love bring all creatures into harmony. Hear the oracle of the goddess Ariadne coming to her priestess. When you are young, you seek that which is like yourself, and you reject the non-self and call it your enemy. But when you grow into maturity, you seek the not-self, for in this is your completion. And so through reconciliation with the enemy comes creation. For the votary of high spiritual truth needs the warm glory of the lover, lest she freezes into an ice maiden. And the lover, demonic in his passions, seeks the ice maiden that will still his ardor. And between these two comes the harmony of the spheres. As you face the gateway into birth, you receive my shining cord. But as you penetrate deeper and still deeper into the labyrinth of time and space of earthly existence, the spiritual thread becomes thinner, more ghostly. For as you remember my thread, it becomes strong. And when you forget it, it wanes. As you move through the years, you leave behind you a spiral pattern of the thread that brings you memory of your true being. Yet you look ahead and see no light. Why? The light is behind you. When you reach the nadir of the labyrinth and face that which you most fear and dread, you may drop the thread. But fear not. I am always with you, though you see me not. For I am conscience, and my mother is nature, and my father is philosophy. Call upon me, and I shall aid you. So are you saved by my grace, and not by your own will. And this must be, for who would be saved through the separate self should be rather aided by the immortal beloved. turn through the mazy windings of the labyrinth, but now you face the cord and it gleams before you like my silver snake. And when you reach the entrance of the double axe, you saw above the maze and look down upon it. And now you understand the meaning of the pattern of life. 
and enjoy its beauty. And you aid others who lose their way in it as you did and lead them to their goal. Now, my friend, we give thanks for the oracle of Ariadne. Know that no heroine or heroine may penetrate this labyrinth and live without Ariadne's thread. Hear the story of the hero, Attic Theseus, and how he fared in the island of Crete. There are words <coughs> be inspired by Ariadne, Dionysus, and by Athena. In the age of heroes, Theseus, son of Isra and Aegeus, sailed from Athens to mighty Crete. He entered the temple of Crateria, the ruling goddess. He is greeted by Ariadne, daughter of the moon goddess Pasiphae, and the king, Minos, son of her wife. Theseus, you are welcome to the temple of strong Crateria, mother of Crete. What wouldst thou of the priestess of the triple moon goddess, Dictina, Ritomartis, Pasiphae? Greetings from Attica to noble Ariadne of the sea, named high fruitful mother of the barley. By leave of royal Minos, I would essay the ordeal of the labyrinth. For what good? To slay the Minotaur and to save my people, the maidens and the youths of Athens from cruel sacrifice. Why is the Minotaur so greatly fierce? What mortal dreads not the son of Pasiphae and Taurus, the white sea bull of Poseidon, a mingled form of two strange shapes, combined and different natures, man and bull are joined. I would face and fight with this all-conquering monster and be victorious. So be it. Behold, this Eresene, a hallowed bough of the olive tree, it is bound round as distaff with sheep's wool twisted into thread. Take thou this end. Let the thread trail behind thee in the labyrinth. But know that if thou dost drop or break this clue of thread, thou shalt surely die. I shall guard it well. In all this holy temple of the mother, I see no entrance to the labyrinth. Go yonder with the thread and seat thyself on the stone of Criteria. Shut thine eyes, and then thou shalt see the gateway. My friend, it is now your adventure to join Theseus and pass through the gateway of the labyrinth of your own and all souls. Now, I want you to shut your eyes and visualize Ariadne's thread, which in verity is the cord which unites a baby and her mother, and its etheric counterpart joins your earthly body to your etheric double. Visualize now the gateway. It is dark. You need now a guide. I am your guide for this trans journey, but you need a guide all your life, your guardian angel. So visualize now the form of this guide. It may appear as a shadowy or luminous form. This guide smiles kindly at you, is happy to be reunited with you, having looked after you for many incarnations. See this guy, my friend. Now, you are given the end of a shining cord. Hold it well, how softly it bleeds. Your guy now stands at your right side, a little behind, for you must walk bravely ahead. And you see this thread like a silver snake winding down this mysterious passage of the maze. You 
pass through the gateway and follow this shining thread and you know you will find lost memories of past lives. You must now go this way in silence knowing that your guide and I am with you and my voice will call you back when you return to Theseus. It is now time to return from whatever experience you have enjoyed in the labyrinth. Now, if you wish to return to everyday life completely for the time being and have your next session another time, please make sure you come back correctly. Come back correctly through the gateway, a 
the labyrinth. Make sure you pass through the gateway. Come back now to everyday consciousness. Give thanks to the deity in whom you believe, whatever your religion, and to Ariadne. Now, have a glass of water and go off and relax. Have a cup of tea or something to eat. While those who wait patiently, for those of us who wish to return, will now just sit quietly and meditate on what has happened before the next phase of our journey where we rejoin Theseus. again you essay that mysterious journey which you have pursued in many incarnations. You face the labyrinth to seek the reality of your being, to face that which you most fear, for that which you most dread is within yourself. And only by, by understanding this hidden self may you attain your innate divinity. You have yourself now passed through one ordeal. Now turn once again to Theseus on his adventures guided by the goddess Ariadne. How can this be? To see with eyes that are closed. Ah, yes, my dim vision clears. Behold, I see a mighty gateway formed of two pillars the support a lowering lintel made of undressed stone. Beyond the pillars is sable night. I clasp my sword hilt, for I see carved on the lintel of, on the lintel the curving double axe of Crete, the labyrinth. Thou dost see the waxing and waning moon of Pisces. Let thy soul arise and pass through the gateway of the labyrinth. Have no fear. Fear? From man to hero, from hero to demigod, from demigod to god, is my great aim, my will is strong. I enter. Yet do not drop my clue thread. I clasp it still. It shines softly, lighting the gloom. I descend an interminable tunnel, ever downwards into darkness. It may be a system of some citadel. Ah, I am in a cave. I find myself once more an infant. I hear a doomful word of the Delphic Oracle. A child is forbidden to my father Aegeus. I can go no further. It is not the will of the gods that I should be born. My birth is a curse. Have courage. Was Aegeus thy true father? Many declare thou art son to the god Poseidon of Atlantis. Then am I a demigod? It could well be so. I find myself a leader of men, even as a boy. Yet also I am heir to King Aegeus. For I uncover the signs of my kingship, sword and shoes, hidden beneath the matriarchal stone of Ethria. Heir to Athens. Do not forget your destiny to reach the center of the labyrinth. True. Even as a youth, I had a strange questing dream of a maze-like catacomb. So like this labyrinth, no less a craftsman than Daedalus, the master artificer of Athens, planned this work. It confounds all marks of distinction and leads me into wild meanders by amazing train of various powers. This maze is as a limpid meander 
that strays into the Phrygian plain and rolls backwards and forwards its various streams, often with wonder surveying its former banks. Now it points upwards to its source, now glides downwards to the sea and fatigues various toils. It wanders and currents, just so Daedalus formed innumerable paths into endless windings in so much that he himself could scarce find the way into the entrance, for manifold and intricate are its windings. Theseus, hear my voice in the cycles of time and space. Lose not the thread. I, Daedalus, design the pattern of the human mind. Two serpents weave their coils about an eight-rayed star. The double axis falls. Within is the enigma. Yet I, Ariadne, hold the shining cord of life. Theseus, why dost thou halt? I am once more a young man. Jealous Medea, the witch persuades Aegeus to poison me. Reject the poison cup and travel on. In the days of my great strength, I will become a second Heracles. I slay robbers and tyrants, and I release their victims. I give aid to the afflicted and freedom to slaves. The people acclaim me as hero. Rest not on thy laurels, but continue in thy quest. Who is that that bars my path? She is rich-haired Helen, glorious Sparta. She turns from me, and now I gaze upon Hippolyta, queen of the Amazons. If thou wouldst rival Heracles, beware his fate, and free thyself from the spells of enchanting women. Better be the web of fair Antiope, that the dreadful dreams of bloodshed that beset old age, my aging eyes, but I cannot clearly see the vision of Aegeus leaping to his death in the wine-dark sea and I all unknowing caused his end and before behold once more my cousins the dead Palantides who rose against me and whom I slew the friendship of the Lapis strengthened me but I live again in my slaughter of their enemies the centaurs I meet the reproachful gaze of wise Chiron, a centre, and my teacher. What grief overcomes you now? That which gives me, which brings torment to my remaining years. What anguish! Behold my dead son, Hippolytus, and my young wife, fair-haired Phaedra, who hanged herself, and all through my burning jealousy and bitter hatred. Thou dost draw near the Minotaur. Dost thou not feel him close? Ah, my friend, Theseus is facing himself. Can you? Face now your conscience. The enemy you slew with hatred, even without blows. The people you most dread, the enemies of your religion, or so you see think. The conspiracy that aims at your happiness. The people who infect your dreams with nightmare. Those who teased you cruelly at school. Who ignored your good work and deprived you of creativity. Those of your family who neglected you. Face what you fear, what you despise, what you loathe. Now, protected by your guide, face your minotaur, the darkness of your own self. Go forth now with blessings knowing that this voice will call you back from the experience which Ariadne gives you.
you have faced the minotaur, the veiled one, with courage. And because you now recognize that the cruel playmates who teased you, those who ignored your life's work, those who despised you, those whom you despise, those who betrayed you, those whom you betrayed, those who hated you, those you hated, are yourself, and you forgive them because you now forgive yourself. You feel an intense peace and relief. No longer need you feel resentment, injury at what life has done to you because you have done it to yourself. You have gained wisdom from experience. Now if you wish to return to everyday life, do so, but make sure you pass through the gateway back to everyday consciousness. Come back, drink and eat. Those who wish to continue with our group, myself and our friends in this time and space, will now see what happened to the hero Theseus, guided by Ariadne as he faced the Minotaur? I have reached the center. Cold horror fills my soul. What evil form is this, crouching in the darkness, half feast, half human, all filled with fear and fury? I draw my sword. I know the Minotaur. I meet his angry gaze. Maddened with battle fury, red eyes, bared teeth, he brandishes his sword. I see into his mind. He aims to shed my blood in death. Theseus, wind my thread about your left wrist for your life's sake. I do so. Only light comes from the thread. Long is the fight, long days, long years, long lives. I see our shadows mingled against the rough stone walls of this, our prison within the labyrinth. Who may pit his will against the fates, not even the Olympian gods? No man may fight his destiny. The beast may slay me, yet not the Minotaur, but destiny. Theseus has broken the thread. I drop my sword, he drops his own. Now in truth I know my enemy. He is my shadow. He is myself. Theseus, son of Poseidon, thou hast unraveled the enigma. Return with the light of the winding thread safely through the labyrinth. Impossible. I have broken the thread. Here on the stones of Criteria, I must remain entranced forever in the underworld. Yet still that thou mayest see visions, what appears before thy gaze? The coming of death. I am in Skyros. Like Aegeus I fall from a lofty cliff. What then befalls thee? I behold a sleeping warrior of no ordinary size. He lies entombed with honor in Athens. By his side lies a brazen spear and sword. For two thousand years lieth this sleeping king that is thyself. Theseus, awake, let Attica arise. There appears before me an apparition of Ariadne, come to restore my life. By her side is her consort, Dionysus, the god of grain and wine he takes from Ariadne the shining crown and darts it to heaven. It mounts the yielding air and it flies like jewels changed into sparkling fires and settles in the place assigned between the constellations. 
resting on its knee, which, and that which holds the snake. By the light of the celestial crown, see the thread and pick it up. Clasping the gleaming thread, I retrace my steps through the labyrinth. I pass through Labrys Gateway. I have returned to Craterius Temple. And to thee, Ariadne, I restore thy thread. Theseus, because thou hast given the words, come hither, all ye people, from Attica to all nations, calling them to thy just commonwealth of peoples. Thy name shall live forever. Thou hast given honour to Athena, as Athena Pandemos, democracy, and as Athena Pythia, she who persuades. And so the goddess decrees that thy Attica shall be forever in Elysium. She shall be heaven for all who love liberty and the peaceful arts. Glory be to Theseus, who has attained his innate divinity. We give thanks to all you, whether you are alone or many, who have joined with us, and to the Reverend Bruce Eve, priest of the Fellowship of Isis, and to Lorraine, who has helped us as priestess acting with us. Now, I want you slowly to come back from this dreamlike world of Greek myth, which is always there because it is true. There was a Theseus, and there is a Theseus, and Ariadne reigns forever in Olympus with the god Dionysius. We give thanks to them for their blessing. Now, and we also are glad to have had my brother, the Reverend Lawrence Sturden Robertson, as priest at the beginning. Now, I want you to come back to your room where you are, but now you feel invigorated, you feel an inner peace and energy. So now, not bothered by resentment about what unpleasant things have happened to you, but strengthened by your own wisdom in coping with life, you feel ready for tomorrow because you have conquered today. I expect you would like to share with me the wonderful books that I used in order to produce this ritual. It was partly inspirational and partly for books. There are Plutarch's Lives, and that gives you the life of Theseus, which is fascinating. Plutarch was very anxious to prove that Romulus was a greater man than Theseus, but I don't think he did so at all. He did his best. That was the Dryden edition. You can get it at every month. You could order it from the library. Then there's some, one of my favourite books, and the most entertaining, is The Metamorphoses of Ovid, which got him um, exiled by the Emperor Augustus because he did seem to laugh rather at the various shape changes of Zeus in, in chasing after women and so forth. And he's a most wonderful writer, very poetic, and uh, his description of the river meander of the maze really gets you into a sort of trance. My edition is 1759 of London, translated by Davidson, but uh, he won't be able uh, to get that. Um, but you could get uh, the metamorphoses quite easy. Then there's a description of Greece by that wonderful tourist, Pausanias, who travelled all around Greece describing the temples in the time of the Roman occupation. It was very well ruled by the Romans, Greece. And uh, he's delightful because he gives personal accounts of everything, just as if he were a traveller nowadays. And you get that at Heinemann and USA Harvard. Then there's the Classical Dictionary of L'Empire, London. Again, that's early, 1797. But again, you can get that anywhere. And there are the famous Greek myths, uh, written very well by Robert Graves, published by Penguin. So now you can do this journey any time you play the tape, and each time you may find the experience is deeper. And I wish you now hail and farewell and the blessings of Ariadne and Dionysus.